To give you a slight idea of how special this car was and is to me, I purchased a special decal that I placed on a specific car during my early teenage years. I knew that one day, whether it be sooner or later, the car would be mine. I would spend hours browsing the internet seeking every glimpse of this car, partaking in forums of longtime 2002 owners, mostly guys in their late 50s and 60s. Obviously, I was the youngest of the majority, if not the youngest in our generation. After earning a couple bucks on the side during my late high school years, I decided to ponder my search for my dream car. Long story short, it took a couple years. This is not a new car where you walk straight over to the dealership and pick out any shiny new sedan that your heart desires. A classic and it takes much more time not only to find but to obtain. Oftentimes the one you want will be clear across the country and not only will it cost you a fortune to ship but not physically able to be there and to see what you're unloading thousands of dollars into isn't very satisfying either. So you're stuck searching in your local area with maybe 100 to 200 mile shopping radius around you. Oftentimes, seekers will stumble across a classic while driving through a deserted road surrounded by rural fields, noticing a speck of it out of the peak of their eye, sitting on a driveway or in an abandoned barn, awaiting a loving owner. My story was not so much the case, in fact, probably one of the sketchiest purchases in Craigslist history. After contacting the owner via text, I started off with an offer that threw a grand off the listed price right off the bat. He agreed instantly. Taking a more in-depth look through the couple pictures he slapped up online, I was instantly intrigued to pursue this car. For one reason or another, I felt like it was what I was searching for. Yes, I sound like a romantic who just found the love of his life. Hold your horse as it gets more interesting or strange depending on how you think about it. After some more sparse back and forth replies, I came to know that the owner didn't even have a title for the car and apparently was selling it for a friend down in Cali. How believable. Any average person would avoid anything to do with a situation like this one and would be long gone, most likely marking the Craigslist advertisement as a scam. Not for me, I kept pursuing this specific car and after a couple weeks, allegedly a title arrived. A guy sends me a picture that was shot with literally a brick. And once again, for one reason or another, I drive up 200 miles up north into Edmonds, Washington for something that might be nothing. From what I told myself, I had nothing to lose except once I saw the car for the first time sitting in the driveway, I instantly knew it was mine. I was hooked. To my surprise, the car started right up and drove like a top. it out on the freeway and it zipped down the highway and the four gears it rocks completely effortlessly. Keep in mind this was my first time actually sitting in my dream car so I was virtually and mentally drooling at every aspect of this car from the sporty yet compact interior design to the little details of how the outside chrome tunes in so perfectly with the rest of the body on this classic icon. More sketchy stuff. I bargained down another hefty amount of the price that was already barking down guy gives me even a lower price than my second offer to round it off. So either this car has something seriously wrong with it or I'm running away with the steal of a century. After sifting through it, found nothing obvious, pulled the trigger with no doubt in mind, proudly peeling away the sticker backing and gently, most carefully, lining the sticker that I purchased during my childhood, meanwhile taking in every single moment of it. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, that's the same car I purchased running better than your Toyota to this very day. The engine roaring, frame shaking, she sprints down the curvy mountain roads, shooting flames out the rear intake with a brisk morning fog, permitting some morning sunlight to seep through a BMW's most legendary vehicle to date, the 1976 BMW 2002. As the sun peeks through the forest's pine trees scattered in masses among the gorge, it pleasantly blinds the driver, challenging his ultimate relaxation. Smoke buzzling out the rear exhaust, flourishing the crispy air with a unique scent of past generations. 
What shined in this car for me was the unique, sporty, yet quirky design of the car. It's something a family can take for a trip to the coast, yet an enthusiast can take to the track proudly. I personally love the car for its sporty characteristics. I'm sure I'll learn to appreciate its family-friendly characteristics when I build a family around it one day. I test its capabilities to the gorge on a weekly basis, zipping through the one-lane routes leading deep into the forests of the beautiful Pacific Northwest scenery. With a unique boxing design it boasts, the car rewards you with a go-kart-like experience around the corners, simulating a day at the track. It's not only fun for the driver, but for the passengers next to me alike. Gas mileage isn't outrageous either, giving approximately 20 miles per gallon, competing fairly close with my aging Toyota Camry. Therefore, it's not completely outrageous to run this car as a daily driver. It can handle it. This car hosts a love-hate relationship, which ultimately bonds my relationship with this car that much closer. Simultaneously, it's forcing me to learn the vehicle, inside out. The more parts I end up replacing, the more I learn about this car and its mechanics. Each morning startup puts a smile on my face. The deep rumble that rewards a turn of the key makes all those repairs worth it. The experience it entails is something you don't expect as the throttle roars. While I'm throwing it into second gear, the vehicle can be heard blocks away in a suburb. Eyes prying sharply to take a look at what's coming around the corner, the legendary Beamer sings majestically in car language, cruising up the freshly paved side streets to my home. Simply put, the different experience is worth everything. But that's not where it ends, that's where it starts. That's where our past generations connect with our current generation, the 1976 BMW 2002.